Rob says, Partey is struggling. Seems that he's lost his legs. What's the least amount you take from him uh, versus letting him see out his contract? So on, on Thomas Partey's future, I've already said many, many times that there's no point in selling him because you think about his age, you think about his injury history, and you think about the contract he's on. And barring the Saudis, nobody else is going to want to touch him with a barge pole for those reasons. He's got something that he can still offer to Arsenal um, in terms of what he brings on the ball. But it's really important for us that Thomas Partey gets back to something more like his peak physical condition. Now, you could argue at his age and after all the injuries he's had over the last few years, there's probably no chance that he gets back to that level and back to where he was when he first arrived at Arsenal. But yeah, I just, I, I look at him and I really, really struggle. I mean, he he has problems getting around the pitch at the moment. He isn't as um, sort of confident as a result of that. He's not playing as aggressively in terms of his forward passes and that kind of thing, because I think he fears what happens if he loses the ball in a way that he didn't in the past. Thomas Partey would happily try and break the lines, would happily try and progress the ball as early as possible, would ping balls out right, ping balls out left, knowing that there was a good chance that those passes would be intercepted, but almost believing in his ability to get across the ground and shut down the right spaces and right areas of the pitch to prevent that leading to a problem for his side. And I just look at him now and I just feel like everything's slowed down. And after the last game, I was looking at it and I was going, well, it's pre-season. Of course, Thomas Partey isn't going to be at his peak physical condition. None of these players are. We're still building up towards the campaign. And for someone who, you know, struggled for most of last season, found his way back into the team and then probably struggled a little bit in the last few games again, you kind of looked at him and you went, well, you know, maybe he needs the full preseason to kind of get himself up to scratch. And over time, he's, he's going to get there. But it's clear to me that physically he's not at the same level anymore. Now, can he bridge that gap between where he is and where he needs to be between now and the start of the season? I'm doubting it now and I'm worried. But we also don't have another player with Thomas Partey's specific skill set, which is why I spent so much of last season bemoaning the fact that he was unavailable. So, yeah, um, I did think he struggled last night. Um, I'm not saying that we should get rid of him because, as I've already explained, I don't think there's much value in that. And I think when we're talking about our midfield being short, to get rid of him as well would only make us shorter. And I don't believe that Arsenal are going to go and spend fortunes in the middle of the park to rectify that. If I thought we could and would, then that would be different. But, you know, we've left it late now. and And I don't believe that there is a... Willingness on the club's part to go and drop a mega amount of money on a midfield player. We're going to bring in, by the looks of it, Mikel Marino, and that's going to be at a very reasonable fee and something within what Arsenal are willing to pay. That's partly why I think that deal appeals to them. Angela says, Partey's legs have gone. We can't rely on him as a regular starter. Paul says, Partey has been consistently poor on this tour. He's no longer press resistant and significantly slower. I'd start Jorginho over him at the moment. Joe says, I can pinpoint the exact game he lost his legs. Partey hasn't been right um, since Man City at the Etihad two seasons ago where he couldn't catch Kevin De Bruyne who was on the ball. Do you remember that game? Yes, that was a horrible game to attend. Um, and yeah. Uh, RM says, uh, I don't know how people can say we should get rid of Partey because he hasn't got the legs anymore. Um, hello, Jorginho. Neither of them have got the legs. That's the truth of it. Neither of them have got the legs to do it at the very highest level every single week. Now, is there a world in which they can share the role and we can get by? Maybe. And I think we're going to have to think along those lines. But both of them are on a really high level technically, and both of them are such good ball progressors that, you know, we um, we could really do with them in the group and in the squad. If Mikel Marino comes in, is there a chance that Rice drops deeper and plays that six role again with Marino left eight, Odegaard right eight, and maybe with Calafiori or Timber's introduction into the defence 
and them stepping into the midfield, almost doing the Zinchenko role, but giving you the defensive solidity that you need as well, that we can get away with Rice being in the six because we can all agree that ball progression is in his strength. But if he's got the right guy next to him, it might not be so much of a problem. I don't know. You know, we're going to have to see how this plays out. This is a really, really interesting area in the team for me. And Mikel Arteta's got some um, some thinking to do.